Welcome to On the Prowl. I'm your host, Nyla Moore, and with me today is the coach of the Dutch Hand Wildcats, Coach Steven Robichaux. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Thank you, Nyla. Coming up on today's show, Coach Robichaux will break down last week's game against the HL Bourgeois Braves, and we will get Coach to preview this week's game against the Thibodeau Tigers. And finally, we will take a look back to last week's Lady Cat Senior Night Volleyball game. So, Coach, congratulations. How does it feel to win your 150th game? Well, you know, I've been asked that a lot in the last uh, few days, but, you know, it's not about me. It's, it's about the program. It's about all the players that ever played. It's about the coaches that ever coached. It's just the school system, the district, the principal who provides us with great coaches. Uh, it's just so many things that go into winning football games, and, and I tell you what, uh, you know, I am the face of Destrian football, obviously, and I've been fortunate and blessed to be there, but uh, it's not about me, it's about that program, and that's all we talk about with the kids, and, and it's, it's really true. By Friday being the last regular season game, how emotional was the game for your seniors? You know, senior night's always special. You get to see the families and, of everybody, and, uh, and the kids think it's a special night. And, uh, you know, to be able to see them react with their family before the game is special, and, uh, and they understand that, you know, hey, it's our last uh, home game, regular season home game, obviously, because of the playoff. But, uh, but the, you know, it's a special night for them to be honored. Uh, they've done, you know, they put uh, four years into uh, not not very easy years, and uh, and, and but it, it, it's all coming, you know, coming to an end right there. So so it's special for them. Uh, they enjoy it. Uh, we enjoy seeing the families out there, and it's just a special night for everyone involved. J.R. Blood threw three touchdown passes to three different receivers in the first 11 minutes of the game. How is he progressing so far this season? Jay, you know, he's done a phenomenal job. Obviously, Coach Boyne has done a great job of, of, of getting him where he needs to be. Uh, just a tremendous uh, person. He studies the game. He works extremely hard. The receivers do a good job of getting open. There's just so many things that are factors in, in, in him having the success he's having. But, uh, but he's just a, he's a guy that comes out. He, he works hard every day. Even when he wasn't a starter, he was working hard, and that's why it's paying off now with him becoming a starter. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. It's Christian Moly. He's been doing this all year for us. He just doesn't need a whole lot, and he can go the distance with his speed. It's just amazing. He had a tremendous night, 175 yards rushing and a 95-yard uh, kickoff return. So just a phenomenal night for Christian. There's JR just putting it up. Justin's been tremendous for us all year. Also, big play. Played defense well at times. Gave up a few little more running than we thought we should, but uh, when, it, when we needed to have it, our kids stepped up pretty good. Smoley again running inside. Nice 12, 13 yard gain. Offensive line doing a tremendous job. Quentin Tover, our sophomore receiver, doing a good job catching a little bubble screen right there. Receiver's doing a good job blocking. They are extended to play out. Nice adjustment by Mike. Get open. Nice touchdown. Big play right here. They go forward on fourth down. We keep our defense in instead of bringing our punt return team in. And uh, you know we guess right. They we end up getting a getting a stop right there and stopping them on fourth down. Quentin Tobor again with a nice catch inside. Uh, looking for big things from him in the next few years. He's a good player. Good play here by making Clark causing the fumble. Jay Strong ends up getting it. Just a tremendous job with uh, getting to the football. Kick is going to be up very far. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Christian just great blocking, hits the scene. Once we get to that point, there's not too many people going to catch him. Immediate return into that was the after the HL had just scored, so it kind of put the momentum back in our court, so it kind of worked out pretty well for us. This was not an intentional guy. Does a good job. He kicks it, and then we end up getting the onside kick. But uh, it's just the way the ball bounced, and the guy from HL ended up kicking it to us, so it worked out well for us. Nice block by Mike Young right there to give extra yardage for Justin Jefferson. And then we hand off to Mosley. Does a good job. You see Elijah Hayes and those guys, Samson Matthews. Guys do a tremendous job for our running backs. Jonathan Duon, one of his eight tackles, had a great night for us. Coming back from that timeout. 
Great job there by Donna Briscoe. We had a couple of guys injured, and Donna got the opportunity to play. Did a tremendous job for us. And off to Mosley. Christian with another great run for us. So what tone was set during the game when Christian made a touchdown on only the second play of the game? Well, he's done that for about the third time this year, and we're really excited that that's happening. Uh, you know, it kind of sets the momentum in your favor, and it kind of, you know, it puts a little doubt in the minds of the uh, defense. So, you know, uh, whenever we can make a big play like that and so early in the game, it really helps us to just get us rolling and get the kids excited about playing, and, uh, and I think it, it's done that in a few times this year. So if he can continue to do that, we'll be happy. <laughs> I promise you. How do you feel about the connection between Blood and Jefferson on the 84-yard scoring strike? You know, uh, Jr. doesn't throw too many bad passes. He did a tremendous job getting it. You know, Justin got open, and, and Jr. was, I think he was like 11 for 12 that game. Just a tremendous effort by him. Uh, he, he does, he throws the, the, the fade route, the, the, the post route, just about as good as anybody we've had. He does a tremendous job. He's got great touch. Um, uh, he's got a real bright future, but that connection that they've been doing that all year, so hopefully they can continue to do so. Although there can always be a turning point in the game, what were your thoughts of being 41 to 13 at halftime? Well, obviously, you know, you're, you're excited because you went and uh, uh, didn't play quite as well as I expected defensively early, but, uh, you know, we kept them out of the end zone. But, uh, but pretty much I thought it was going, going quite well. You know, when you can score 41 points at halftime, uh, that's always a good thing. So, uh, and also it lets you allow you to get your young guys in so they can get some experience also. So uh, we were excited to have time to be up by, uh, by 41 to 13. And, uh, you know, just, just thought that, you know, we were playing well and, and had to continue doing that into the third quarter. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. I always try to play your ones coming out of halftime and uh, that, that's always a good rule of thumb. Uh, so we were able to do that and uh, get them a couple of series into the second half. Nice Mike sets up his blocks real well. Good blocking downfield by Justin. Gets in the end zone in the middle of the third quarter. Good play right here by Jay Stroud. He's been doing that all year. Another good job by Aaron Buckwalter. See Champ back. Craven down there. Alex Huzar, the guy just Stop coming struggles. in on us, all making a play. A tackle. Rob Hall does a good job turning this in. Uh, Goes down. <clears throat> did Mr. Duhorn did a good job making a tackle. The ball. All oh, young kids in now. It's like I said, it's a great opportunity for those guys to get some game experience. They did a tremendous job. Aaron Buckwalter does a good job right here. Very big tackle off to the side. Here we see second and ten. Ball comes out. Manages to pick it up. Jalen Smothers come up with a great interception. Kind of keep HL out of the end zone. Took this win. That'll make them now. Probably the biggest play that you didn't see on that was when uh, they brought Cohen in, uh, tore an ACL, came in at the very end of the game and nailed on the ball. But uh, just, you know, to be able to get him in on senior night was special. And uh, Coach Bowen did a good job of making sure we got that happening. So, so uh, just uh, he played and got the, the experience that. So we're excited to be able to get that done for him. Is there any word on when Con Grande will be back fully? Cohen started practicing a little bit. Uh, you know, we, you know, just depends on how he feels. Uh, he, he does a little bit more every day. Uh, I think there's a chance that you know he could see action pretty soon. So we're excited for that. So uh, just, just you know, you're not going to find a better person, a better kid, uh, a leader. Uh, so we're excited that he can come back hopefully and, and play a little bit and help this football team win games. Have you seen improvement as a result of what your team has been working on in practice? I think so. You know, I, I think our, our guys continue to work hard. They, they've been doing a great job all year. Um, I, I think our coaching staff has been phenomenal. Um, uh, I just think that we know we got to get better. We talk about it all the time. You know, it's no matter who we're playing Friday night, but we just got to get better every practice to be the better, best team that we can be. And, uh, and that's been the philosophy, and that's what we've been working on, and it's been working so far. Do you feel that putting in Destrehan's younger players can really help them out for later seasons? 
There's no doubt it can. You know, uh, I think the more game experience they get, uh, again, and it motivates them to be better also. And so uh, I think it works kind of twofold there. But uh, uh, any experience you can get on the field helps you down the line. And, uh, and I think that just helps them to understand what they need to work on also. So uh, I'm really excited that they get to play uh, on Friday nights. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Coming up, we will get Coach to look ahead at this week's game against the Thibodeau Tigers. And we will hear from Destrehan's volleyball team and their senior night game versus Thibodeau. We'll be right back. Welcome back to On The Prowl. I'm your host, Nyla Moore. Before we get coached to look ahead to this week's game against the Thibodeau Tigers, the Destrehan Lady Cats volleyball team had their senior night last Thursday. Here's a look back. The Lady Cat volleyball team started off slow Thursday night, but were able to come together as a team to take three straight sets from the Thibodeau Tigers. Big win tonight, big district win. Uh, came out kind of sluggish, uh, which was expected, but uh, very proud of uh, our net play, especially. Uh, two middles, Zerang and Dan, did a phenomenal job. Uh, they were uh, pretty much covering a lot, you know, very few balls that actually got through that, that shouldn't have, uh, but they did a, a, a fine job, fine job. I think we just, you know, combined as a team, came together and, you know, talked it up, did what we had to do and pulled through. When the team starts picking up, then everybody attitude starts picking up and we start talking and it just makes me feel better. Many of the players felt that they had to play hard because it was also senior night. They valued winning the game for their senior players. I think the idea that it was senior night really pushed us, so we wanted to do it for the seniors. And not only that, we really knew we had to get this win and it was important to us, so we needed to pick ourselves up and get it back. I think it was big for me because Abby, the senior, and I are, are really close and I wanted to win this game for her. And we've always been so close every year to make it to the playoffs. And I really wanted it this year, so I really needed to step up and so did a few of us. It's going to be exciting if we make it there because we haven't made it there yet. We've always been either the first team that's right there at the line. But this year, I think we're going to make it and it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be something new. Oh, that, that's, I think they had a lot to do with it. I mean, you know, being a, uh, an underclassman loaded team, they, they really wanted the seniors to go out uh, with a win, you know. So in other words, and that, I think they took it more personal after that first set that, you know, hey, we've all got to step up because we've got to help them out. You know, they can't do it. You know, that's why it's so cool about this is, you know, we go 10 deep. We go 10 deep on our team. So, and that's, that's uh, everybody knows their role. That's the good thing about it. The Lady Cats are hoping to succeed in their next few games in order to participate in the playoffs. Confidence seems to be the major key in order to outplay their opponents. I feel like we're going to win these last games, we're going to go to playoffs, and we're going to make a good run. Well, we're hoping to secure a spot. Tonight was a big win. We have to win, I'm pretty sure, one out of our next two matches uh, to assure it. Uh, we can't have a letdown. And that's my job. I've got to keep make sure that we don't have a, a mental letdown, and uh, because physically we're fine, we're fine, we're as healthy as we've been uh, all year. So that's no excuse, and we just have to just outplay and out hustle our opponents. By Destrehan being eight and zero, do you feel that you have an advantage over Thibodeau? 
Well, I, I think that, you know, being 8-0 really doesn't mean a whole lot. It's just uh, as far as this game coming up, you know, but uh, Thibodeau's got a lot to play for this week. They, uh, you know, they they still only have, they don't have any district losses, so their district title is still in grasp for them. So there's a lot of reasons for them to play. Uh, Thibodeau's a tough place to play. It always has been. Great fan support, uh, great athletes, uh, and they got one of the best athletes in, in the state, and Amik uh, Robinson. So it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a war down there. We just got to be ready to play, and uh, hopefully we can come out and get and uh, get a win. Are there any concerns on what your team may need to work on to remain undefeated? Well, you know, obviously you have to be successful in everything we do, and that's what we always praise. But uh, but the thing that we have to do is, is make sure that we focus this week, focus on what we need to do to, to, to stop Thibodeau. Like I said, they, they, their skilled guys as good as anybody's. They have tremendous players. Uh, we got to make sure that we're really focused and trying to do what we need to do. And offensively, we got to execute. Uh, you know, we got to be able to run the football. We got to be able to make things happen. And and I think that's going to be the key all week to make sure that we're focusing on what we need to do as is every week. So we'll see what happens. Are you concerned that your team may start to feel a little overconfident after coming off of all the wins? I don't think so. I think they realize what's at stake here. Uh, they understand that uh, that Thibodeau is a great team. They, you know, they only have two losses. One of them was St. All. One was at St. Charles with two good football teams. So they know that they're a good football team. Uh, you know, they know that that we have to play well to beat them. And uh, I think the, if Monday's in the indication, I think we're gonna have a good week and we should be okay. Always a pleasure talking to you, Coach. Well, thanks, Mal. I appreciate it. And that will do it for today's edition of On the Prowl. For updates on Press Play Productions, make sure to check out our website at PressThePlay.tv. I'm your host, Nyla Moore. Thanks for watching.